Hello! Um, just the, the video I was uh, putting together for about uh, research. Um, so this is the process I go through um, and it's a, a fairly long-winded process but it seems to work for me all right and uh, it's got me out of a few uh, sticky situations when I was painting stuff up. Um, so when I'm painting units up for my Napoleonics uh, there's several things I need to take into consideration. Um, how large was the unit? Um, what makes up the unit in terms of, you know, did it have grenadiers and light infantry mixed in with the, uh, the normal centre companies? Or was it just all light or was it just all grenadiers, that kind of stuff? And um, what colours were the uniforms? Which is the, the most obvious thing to, to think about when you're painting a unit up. So, if we take a little step back from that, um, the very first thing we need to figure out is, well, what units do I need to paint up? Um, and so here I've got a, a few books that I've been using uh, to, to try and uh, solve that question or answer that question. And the most useful one is this one here, Regiments at Waterloo. Now it's a really old book, this one, um, and it's falling apart, but the information in it is quite good. So if I just bring that forward here, see what I mean about it falling apart. <clears throat> so here we have the order of battle for Waterloo. Um, so you see the corps I mentioned here, the, the units within the corps, cavalry for example down here, who is in charge of these particular um, units or, or divisions or brigades even. And we move over there, we've got the French over here. So this is what I've been using along with this book here, so Waterloo, which is an Osprey book. And in here, let's see if I can find the right page. Here we go. So this is the order of battle for the French. Um, elsewhere in the book you'll find the British and you'll find the um, Prussians as well. So again, we're just looking down the list here and we see which division, which corps, what it consisted of, that kind of stuff. Now, if I was putting something together for an individual battle within the, the 100 Days campaign, I use these kind of books. So here's, this is all about Quatre Bras, and it has a, a cut-down uh, list of um, units. There we go. So these, these are the guys that were involved in just Quatre Bras. So that was the first stage, figure out what uh, what units I'm actually interested in. The next step from that is, okay, so what did they look like then? So now we know what, uh, what I'm painting, you know, got to move on from there. So that's where books like this come into to play. So again, another Osprey book, and um, this is a, the, the, Grenadier, the Imperial Guard Grenadiers. And you get some nice colour plates and that kind of stuff. Some very nice information about what colour horses are in here as well. <laughs> so there we go, some nice colour plates. So they're very fancy. And then we've got the Dragoons of the Imperial Guard. I bet you can't guess what I'm painting next, can you? <laughs> so again, some really nice information, some lovely colour plates Ooh, in here. They're going to be great to paint. And for the British side, this book is fantastic. It's um, It seems to hover in price. Um, I've seen it go over £100. Um, I didn't pay anywhere near that for this. Um, just keep your eye open if you on eBay if you want to have a look for these. this book. Um, it's Sometimes it goes, as I say, over £100 and it's not worth that much. But um, you know, if you can pick it up fairly reasonably... It's a great book to, to uh, get hold of. And in here, there's all sorts of information. And then we start to get into the actual regiments. So it's the 28th, 21st, and so on. And it has a whole bunch of descriptions. 
these guys. And I think it gets into cavalry as well. I think this book has cavalry in it. Although I'm not exactly sure anymore. <laughs> anyway, you get the general idea. It's a very, very, very good book. And, yeah, there we go, cavalry. So these are light dragoons and so on. And then, don't forget the Perry um, boxes have uh, these kind of uh, charts in them as well, these inserts, that give you ideas on uh, what colours things should be. So there's the Duke of Cumberland's um, Hussar Regiment that I painted up for the Hanoverians not so long ago. So these are really useful as well. So once I've figured out what things should look like, it then gets transferred to the laptop. <clears throat> so you've seen this spreadsheet of Doom before, but what you didn't see before was the um, the various tags along the bottom. So this is the French um, order of battle. So I transferred this from the, the first book I showed you, the Regiments of Waterloo, and produced this spreadsheet from it. And if we then say, let's have a look at, I don't know, Dragoons, for example. So if we clear all those, let's go find some Dragoons. So here's all the Dragoons I've, I've marked up. And there's the facing colours and what colour trousers they should have, that kind of stuff. And I've done the same for the King's German Legion. And of course the Hanoverians you've already seen. And there's the Imperial Guard I've just started to put together. So I've yet to, to sort out the uniforms, but of course I'll be using the books to, to figure that out. So that's how I go through my, my research. Um, books first and then transfer to a spreadsheet. I also look up um, pictures online of uh, you know where people have painted units um, already. So if I scroll across here, sometimes I leave myself links to websites where I found pictures. And this particular website is probably one of the best I've ever found. And this is for the Hundred Days campaign stuff. So if I just zoom into the um, the URL for you. So if I say I want to have a look at, um, say, the Brunswick troops, we'll say line infantry and the 1st Battalion. So let's take a look at uniforms and you get this kind of stuff come up. Absolutely brilliant. Exactly what you need to see. And if you scroll down you see a side view and what colour the thing should be. So I take this with a pinch of salt and I do go and verify that with other sources. But the, I haven't found one that's wrong yet on this site. Um, he does list his sources here. Um, but yeah, I haven't found one that's, that, uh, that's been wrong so far. Um, so this is a great resource for, uh, to, uh, for painting. So if we have a look at uh, Holland, Line Infantry, Belgium, there we go. So I thought I'd share that with you because um, when I first started, I had no idea what I was doing, where to look. Um, I generally painted it, painted the units, which looked like the cover on you know, the box art, basically, which invariably is wrong because it's just a, an artist's impression of something. Uh, something. And um, you have no idea, um, you know, when you start out that regiments have facing colours. And facing colours do not, you know, show which regiment you're actually painting, that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah.
yeah, the the Osprey books are a great starting point if this is if this is the only stuff you can get hold of. Great starting point. Um, the books on oh, for the campaign, sorry, because it gives you army lists. Uh, the the Men at Arms books are brilliant for um, giving you ideas of what things should be looking like. And if you want to move up, books like this, these are great, but they're more expensive, of course. But don't pay silly money for these things, that's not worth, you know, hundreds of pounds. Um, but don't forget these things that come inside of the uh, the code boxes. And, of course, Warlord has a few ideas on the back of their boxes, I think. And then, if you find things like this in charity shops, I think this one here cost me £1.50, I think, something like that. Maybe two quid, I can't remember now, it was ages ago, uh, from a charity shop. Um, this one here was an eBay purchase, uh, but for only, only for a couple of quid, it wasn't massive amounts of money. So they're quite useful too. Anyway, that's enough waffle for me. Bye for now.